Okay, today is August 13th and I am, you can, as you can see, I've got a bunch of tomato plants sitting here. I'm getting ready to do my first grafting. I did technically do some grafting earlier this summer for some practice that turned out well and it worked for, as an experiment just to make sure I knew what I was doing before I do this many type of, this many plants and I didn't want a chance to ruin them all. So now that I think I know what I'm doing um, and we're at that time of year to, uh, to do this, I'm going to be grafting tomato plants and the hope is to have these ready for planting around September 1st. As I said, today is August 13th, so they'll spend a, about a week in the healing chamber, which I'll show you later. And uh, when that's done, get them out, get them acclimated to some sun and get them in the ground planted by the beginning of, the, of September. Now the reason that we are grafting our tomato plants is we have some soil borne issues uh, nematode problems. So I've got a rootstock that's quite resistant to that. We've also got Ralstonia, which is a bacterial wilt, which can be a very quick, very big problem for tomato plants. If it's in your soil, it kills your plants pretty quick. Um, so it's resistant to that. And uh, the variety of rootstock, which this is the rootstock, just so you know, this, everything that's in the rootstock, this is rootstock, everything that's in these trays like this is the scion so it's easy for me to know what is what but here is the the rootstock name is rst 04105-t so that's the rootstock that we're using and i had planted these um today is exactly three well the scions were seeded three weeks ago and the rootstock was seeded uh that was on a Sunday, so because today is a Sunday, uh, the rootstock was seeded on a Thursday, so just a few days before that, because the sun, the rootstock grows a little bit slower. Um, this rootstock also, if you do not have you, because I'm growing these in grow lights, uh, in our grow room, and this particular rootstock um, will get really bad edema if you don't have UVB light. So I had to invest in getting some UVB lights in there to uh, to be able to grow these and that worked out fine so we don't have any issue. I noticed a little bit of issue one a while in just a few spots but it ended up being pretty much nil. So I'm glad that worked out well for us for the rootstock and that is um, that's kind of the introduction to what I have going on here. I guess um, we can mention we have three varieties, Big Beef, Sun Gold, and San Marzano's. Uh, the bulk of it is gonna be San Marzano's because I really like uh, pasta sauce. So that's why we have those. And uh, so we'll be doing mostly San Marzano's and then some Big Beefs and some Sun Golds. And the idea is here in Florida, what we're trying to do is we're gonna plant in September and in the event of any freezes, we will tarp the whole trellis system, put a heater in there to cover them just in case we get a freeze or two or three this winter because it's usually anywhere from zero to three potential freezes that we'd get to be able to protect them through winter. But we'd still be able to get some fruit throughout winter, nothing serious, but by February, March, really start getting fruit all the way till summer when the summer would finally kill the plants. So that's our strategy and we'll ultimately see how it goes and we'll keep you updated on that. And um, I'm not really gonna show like really close detail on how to do this grafting. I'm not an expert, I'm still learning. So um, I do have my tools here and everything. Yeah, so you can check out some other videos on, on the, the grafting process, but you might be able to see a little bit of, of it in this particular video. So I'm just, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get going with this.
Okay, today is Friday. Um, we did the grafting on Sunday. Put the grafted plants in this humidity chamber right here, healing chamber, that day. Left it in there for about 24 hours or so before I turned lights on. And I started using lights. Now the lights do cause it to wilt a bit during the day because it will use up water and when you do that. So some people leave it in dark for a few days. But I did some reading where people used lights throughout the whole time, so I've done that. Um, here we are on day five, and uh, we're starting to wean down the, the humidity in there. Right here's the, this, this controls the humidity, so I've been keeping it right between 97 and 100%, and I've just recently dropped it into like, I think 85 to 90 and then there's the temperature control in there. Currently 78.6 in there. This setup right here has my water and a fogger, fans. It runs the, the fog right up into there and into there. And then there's another fan right up here that will pull the cold air from the air conditioner to cool this room into there to basically monitor the temperature in here and then I can open this and so you can see these little roots coming out that happens because of the intense humidity in here there's going to be some plants that aren't going to make it I can see that but for the most part most of the stuff in the 90 percentile, high 90, probably 95 percent or so is going to make it. It looks like it at this point. But here's some over here that are kind of droopy that may not be making it. Oh, there goes that fog. Oh, if you can see the fog on this, I got to shut this. I hate, hate breathing that fog. The fog makes me cough. <coughs> so. Yeah, or oh, tomorrow I'll drop the humidity a little bit more, and then I'll drop the humidity a little bit more uh, once again on um, Sunday. So, and then we'll uh, basically have these things back to normal, let them grow for another week, and then take them outside and get them acclimated to the sun. And so, yeah, that's this portion of the steps. Today is August 30th and Corey has previously put in this tomato trellis. I believe this is the trellis to make you jealous and you've seen previously how Corey grafted our tomato plants. They're doing really well. Here they are over here in the trays. Um, and this is how they're looking. We've put these around to help uh, keep critters out and extra support, etc. But you can see where the graft has taken place. There's air roots trying to come out of what was grafted onto the rootstock, and we're having to keep those out of the dirt. Oh, here's one. Oh, come here. Here's one. He's having to trim those off because we don't want those roots going into the soil because if they do then the graft will have, will be to no effect because we're trying to keep the uh, grafted part from getting nematodes. They were grafted onto rootstock that is resistant to nematodes um, so trying to keep those out of the ground. That's why we're not burying these deeper. Um, generally we would bury tomato plants deeper than this because they do set these air roots out. Um, but this is how it's going so far.
put in the low irrigation so that we can water tomato plants on the bottom without them being soaked from the top. Pretty cool, he's gotta do these other two rows now. That's a good one. That's nice. So here's what we got. We got a house bowl full. Um, got a bunch of little ones like this, but we did get some decent sized. As you can see, we had them planted under our um, roselle bushes. Um, of course, the soil is a little bit richer in some places than others, but I think next time we will plant them without anything around them or uh, above them, because I think the uh, roselle kind of blocks some of the sunlight but it's pretty decent and got several meals out of this for this season uh, so next summer we'll do um, plant them in a different section of the garden uh, by themselves okay I'm doing an update on our roots our tomato plants that were grafted on the rootstock that's supposed to be resistant to or fairly resistant to uh, Ralstonia, which is bacterial wilt, but we're having a, quite a few problems. As you can, here's a plant that I just planted to replace this one, because this started wilting. And when they wilt, they're pretty much toast, pretty quick. So this is, you can see this one over here too, went, this particular area right here is really bad. But uh, we've had, I think, seven so far that we've lost out of 60. I've re and I replace them, but I don't think the replacements will make it. So I don't know if our context, it's September here in Florida. It's still really hot, over 90 degrees every day. And uh, the the warmer temperatures and the really moist soil from the, the summer are, are a time when that Ralstonia bacteria is um, really bad. So... I don't know if it would have worked out better if I would have planted these in October, but I don't want to plant them that late. So, oh, we might have to figure something else out for next year, plant them in a different spot because even grafting them on a, a rootstock that's supposed to be resistant to this stuff isn't working in our particular case. There's another one that's starting to go down. That one I just replanted because there was one that was dead and that one was replanted. This one's been here since the beginning and it's fine so far. And this one's been here since the beginning and it's fine so far. But this particular area right here has been notoriously bad. So, well, that's what it is. I'm sure we'll probably lose some more, but uh, just keep trying and we'll see how it, how it goes through the rest of the, the season. God bless.